Hello everybody and welcome back and in this tutorial we will cover some of the burp suit attacks that could be useful for us so let us start off by turning uh, our burp suit on so uh, you can turn your your burp suit from the applications I will just turn mine on from the terminal and also if you unset the proxy as me in the previous video let us just set burp suit to be our proxy so we can intercept our packets. So just go here on the preferences. We already covered all of this. Let's scroll down to the network settings. Let me just click here on next for the burp suit and start burp suit. And here go on network proxy and then on settings and just check here the manual proxy configuration. So click here OK and now your burp suit is set as a proxy. Now as we already know, burpsuit is already set to intercept our packets, so if we try to, for example, go on google.com, we won't be able to connect. So let us first of all turn that off, and now we should be able to access the Google page. Waiting for Google, now the internet is a little bit slow, so we will wait for that. The first thing I want to show you is the burp spider. Now, the burp spider, basically, they are active and passive spidering of the web page. Uh, the passive spidering, the burp suit dies, does by default. So, if we, uh, for example, we visit Google, if you go on this arrow, it will show you the subdirectories of the Google, and you can also go as much as you want. As we can see, there are a bunch of these files that it already found in the Google. Now, how does the scanning work, or the spidering, it basically, uh, watch is the HTML page, the HTML page, and here it has a bunch of these links, and it clicks on each of these links. So, for example, the spider basically just scanned through this HTML code and found, for example, this link, and it clicked on it, and then it added it to the spidering folder, where it shows all of the links that are connected on that page. Now, in order for you to spider a web page, of course your intercept has to be turned off. Now, and if you wanted to scan the page actively, you need to right click. For example, let us right click on the on the on the let us choose right here so we can go let us just first of all visit the our OWASP virtual machine. So we visited that and let us see what it gave for it right here. It didn't print it out yet, so let me just reload this page. And right now we have it right here. And for now on it doesn't have anything there, but if we go on to the, for example, this one, let me just see, it found the subdirectory that we clicked on. But let's say we want to spider only this cyber directory actively. Just click here on yes and you can see we have added item to target so we want bear proxy to stop sending out to scope items. Let us just go here on the spider and we can see that the requests made and the bytes transferred it is still running. As we can see use these settings to monitor and control burp spider. To begin spidering browser target application, then right click on one or more nodes in the target sitemap and choose the spider place host branch. Now, this is the active spidering. As we can see, the, this has a bunch of subdirectories itself and you can find some of the interesting things with just searching those subdirectories. Now, that isn't really that important to us, so we won't be giving too much of our time to that. What we want to do is we want to perform our first attack on the OWASP virtual machine. So uh, the first thing we will do will be rather simple. Let me just open the Firefox and go one step back. And what you want to do is you want to go onto the your OWASP uh, IP address and then once you go to this page, just click here on the OWASP web goat. Now, it will prompt you with the username and the password. The 
username and password will be webcode. So for the username webcode and for the password also webcode. So just type that and you should be able to log in right here. We do not want to save password since we will be brute forcing the same login later on. It will ask you, it will basically prompt you with the welcome screen. So just click here on start webcode. And here we can have a bunch of attacks that we can perform on the OWASP webcode. Now, for the first attack and the rather easy one, we want to go onto, onto the authentication flaws. So basically, let me just find where that is. Here it is. And we want to go onto the forgot password. So if you go onto the forgot password, it will basically ask you for the username of your own account in order to change the password. Now, what the problem with this is, well, first of all, we do not know any username for this uh, specific page. So if we type here, for example, GGGGG and submit, it will say not a valid username. Please try again. Now, the concept of this attack is that we send a bunch of usernames right here and hope that we get a different response from the server for some of those usernames, which will basically tell us that that username exists. So let me just explain that a little bit better. For example, let's say we send 10 usernames into this. We just type here 10 different usernames and one of them happens to exist on this web page. For that specific one, it will not print us this error which says not a valid username. Please try again. Which means that our HTTP response for the server in its HTML code won't have this string. Which will make the HTTP response basically smaller or bigger in terms of bytes and we will be able to determine the difference between the HTTP response from the not valid username and from the valid username. Now, in order for you to understand this better, let us do that in practice. So what we want to do is, first of all, turn our intercept on for this. So just go on the intercept on. And so our goal right now is to find out a valid username. So if we type here anything, so just type here anything. Here we will receive that packet that we sent, which is a post request since we are posting in this form right here on this page, as we can see, and our username that we are posting is anything. Now you can just forward this or turn the intercept off. And we want to find this packet. We want to find this packet in the, in our burp suit. So let's just find it. Post. Wait, we are looking at the responses. This is not it. Post anything. So here it is. This is our post request that we sent a few seconds ago, which says username anything. And we got a not valid username for that. So what we want to do with this packet is we want to send it to an intruder. Now the intruder is basically a brute forcer for the burp suit. So here you can have, if you right click on the packet, so find your post packet with the username, right click on it and go send to intruder. Once you do that, you will see this uh, section right here will turn orange. So just click on it and you will see these four options right here. What you want to do is go onto the positions and you will see your packet. Now, the next thing you want to do here, you will see that bunch of, that some of these things right here are selected. For example, the username, the submit button, the our cookie, uh, session ID, PHP session ID, JSON session ID, screen menu, so what you want to do is click here on clear in order to remove all of that selection. And right here, what we want to do is only select our username. So just select anything and click here on add. And you will see that out of all of these things, only our username is selected. 
Now, why do we do this? Well, we do it basically so Burpset knows which part of the packet to change with the certain list that we will provide it with different usernames. So if we left it on all of those things before selected, it would change all of those things to different usernames and it will make page not load. Since it would change the link, the cookie, and it would all crash basically. But then we cleared it and added only username and selected it and now it will only change the username. Now, under the attack type, you will have four options. What you want to select is the sniper option. Uh, the sniper option basically uses one list and selects each input position one by one. So we provide, for example, the list of five usernames, which we created on a, in our terminal or wherever. You can use the user, the user list basically from the kernel Linux itself, since it comes installed with a bunch of these board lists. And it will send packets one by one with changing this value right here with a different username from the list. So let us do that. Once you perform all of this, so once you select your username and uh, you click here on add, select the sniper attack type option, you want to go onto the payload. Now the payload sets for now on you want to leave unchanged and in the payload options, the simple list, you want to click on load in order for us to load the list. And what we want to go right here, we want to find the list that already comes pre-installed in the Kali Linux. Uh, so just go where I go. So go to this slash directory and go to the user. Let me just find it. User. Then go to the share. Then go to the word list. Let us just find the word list. Should be somewhere here word lists here, so click on the word lists, click on Metasploit, and from here we want to find the HTTP default users dot txt. HTTP default users dot txt, you want to select this uh, user list and click here on open. And as you can see, this is a smaller user list, it basically has like 15 passwords or something like that. And once you click that, you want to go on to the start attack. Now, what this will do, it will exchange our username input with all of these different users from the list. So here it will say the community edition of Burpsuit contains the demo version of Burp Intruder. Basically, this says that the free version of Burpsuit will run slower than the pro, pro version of Burpsuit. And in order for you to run this uh, brute force faster, you need to buy the Pro version, but for now on we will just click here on the OK since we don't need it. And as you can see, it is running all of these usernames in the form right here. So it is sending packets with different usernames. And as we can see, it finished. There were 14 usernames and all had status code 200. But what we want to search right now is the difference in the length of the response of the server. That's what I was saying. Basically, as you can see, all of these are 30,606, except one, which is 30,516. What does that mean? That means that it got a different response from the server than all of these others, which is a good thing since it possibly means that this username is a valid username. As we can see in the any other username, so let's pick this one for example, which has this length and go on to the response. And we can try to find the not a valid username. Please try again, it will be there. It's just very hard to find since this is a huge HTML file. It doesn't even, it doesn't even matter, so just find the username that has different length. And if we paste the admin right here, since we can see that this is the admin is the only one with a different length and we click on the submit, we can see that we proceeded to the next step since that username was a valid username. And now it says the, what is your favorite color for that account? Now you can 
you know, basically brute force this as well with the same method. So just find, create a list with a bunch of different colors and brute force this field the same way we brute force the username input. But we won't be doing that right now. What we want to do next, with, and by next I mean in the next video, is we want to brute force a login. So basically we will be brute forcing the username and passwords at the same time. So we will do that in the next video. And until then, I hope you have a great day and I will see you later. Bye.